The police force issues orders that no one is exempted from the coffee imposed on Nigeria and later issues exemptions for essential workers. What really is going on? And the House of Representatives questioned the federal government on the whereabouts and status of the Chinese doctors. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, contrary to a directive by President Mohamed Buhari, ordered police command not to exempt anybody, including workers and essential duties, when enforcing the ban on interstate movement and the nationwide curfew. The Nigerian police force, however, withdrew the order restricting the movement of essential workers during the coronavirus curfew. This comes after several essential workers, including journalists and health workers, have suffered harassment from police officers for moving during the curfew. And joining us to discuss this is Frank Umba, the public relations officer of the Nigerian Police Force via Skype, and also Chris Isiguzo, the president, Nigerian Union of Journalists, via phone. Thank you, Mr. Frank, for joining us, and also Mr. Chris. Thank you, Ben, and it's a pleasure being here. Pleasure having you with us. Now, the Inspector General of Police has rescinded an order restricting the movement of essential workers amid the COVID-19 lockdown. Can you help us understand what informed this decision in the first place? I think, first of all, let me correct your, the premise on which you're building your question. Okay. If you have followed the trajectory of our activities uh, since the beginning of um, the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the concerted air force nationally, to curtail and control the spread of the virus, you will understand that our communication has been very, very clear. We've been very consistent on the need for citizens to work together so that we can achieve our overall objective, which include keeping the country and um, its citizens safe. And in all our communication, we've always insisted on strict enforcement of the restriction orders, and we've also insisted on the respect of the fundamental right of citizens. And we've also, um, in several of our press releases, restated our commitment to respecting the right of other essential workers who are invaluable fighters in the front line in efforts to keep our nation safe. And that has been our position, uh, that, has, that has also continued to be our position. Um, in the wake of all the controversies last night, we had to issue a statement uh, restating this position. And even as I speak to you today again, uh, following on ending inquiries about the status of essential workers as it relates to um, the position of the police and other, other law enforcement agencies enforcing the restriction order, as well as the national curfew, we've also issued another statement and unequivocally uh, stating the fact that persons who are on essential duties have got the right to move around but, uh, as long as they do so um, in, in the course of discharging their, 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 their essential duties. Now, can you, for the sake of clarity, give us a class of workers classified as essential workers, just for the sake of clarity one more time to the viewers who are watching right now? Perhaps uh, I will start with you because, I mean, probably that's the only way I can get, I can get you to begin to smile wherever you are. Um, journalists are clearly essential workers, uh, I mean, essential service providers for purposes of this definition. And of course, our medical personnel who are in the front line um, putting their lives, uh, putting their lives in danger every day, uh, fighting tooth and nail to make sure that those who have been infected are treated and um, and, and safely uh, discharged, and are also part of the um, the essential workers or the essential service providers. Apart from the apart from journalists and medical workers. Uh, 
And law enforcement agents are also essential um, service providers for these purposes. Ambulance service providers fall, fall within this category, as well as firefighters. Of course, members of the Nigeria Armed Forces who are also involved in the enforcement duties touching on uh, COVID-19 regulations are also clearly uh, performing essential duties, and so they are also excluded. And beyond these categories of, of workers who are generically known as essential workers, the federal government also expanded the list of essential service providers to include uh, um, workers within the oil and gas industry, uh, tanker drivers who are moving petroleum products from one part of the country to the other, uh, persons who are moving agricultural products from one person from one part of the country to to the other, uh, telecommunication providers who need to keep working so that uh, we will be able to talk to each other and communicate uh, with each other, whether in on, on Zoom or, or or other platforms. Uh, those uh, these categories of persons clearly fall within the essential service providers. Oh, right, Mr. Chris, um, it's Suzuko. I'm going to come to you now. Now, we've had cases in all of the lockdowns recorded. We've had cases of police harassment to, um, to a few health workers and even journalists in the course of their duty. And I believe you're aware of some of these um, as reports all across have I been mean, brought that to, to four. How do you react to the position taken by Mr. Frank about this evening, given the directive um, we've seen it upon just today by the IGO police? Mr. Chris, are you there? <clears throat> Hello. Yes, go. I can hear you, Mr. Chris. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Hello. Yes, Mr. Chris, I can hear you. Hello. We'll try to reconnect back with Mr. Chris. There um, seems to be a network problem can there. Now, me? Let, let me come back to Mr. Frank about... Now, some okay. essential workers who earlier alleged of, of, being, of being harassed, like the doctors in Lagos who have decided to stay just sit at home protest against their alleged harassment, um, good to know it's been reversed now. But is the police authority making any move to reassure this set of workers of their safety when they go about their essential services and duties? I'm essentially, I'm essentially on this program doing just that, and uh, I've been doing that all day. And I can also, uh, I'm sure you know that I'm, I'm speaking to you not just in your capacity as Mr. Benny. I'm speaking to you because you are a journalist. And um, um, I believe when I speak to your, 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 your medium, I'm also speaking to Nigerians. And so what I'm doing here again is doubly um, reassuring those categories of workers, whether they are journalists, whether they are um, they are healthcare providers, whether they are persons are moving petroleum products from one part of the country to the other, whether they are persons that work in the Nigerian Ports Authority, whether they are those key persons working in, in, in the petroleum sectors, uh, um, in, in telecommunication sectors, whether they are other law enforcement agents and even private uh, security providers that indeed these services need to be kept running. We understand the, the very patriotic role uh, medical personnel, our journalists, and other essential service providers. Are, 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 we understand the very uh, sensitive nature of the services they are rendering to the nation. We understand this, the, the importance of the roles our law enforcement community are providing to the country. And we need to keep working together with us categories of persons. These categories of persons are in the front line. As a matter of fact, I know um, a lot of these medical uh, health care providers who, a lot of these health care providers who not just only suffer a lot of stress in the course of helping to combat, contain, and con contain the spread of this virus, but a lot of them has also uh, suffered in, have also contracted some of this virus in, in the course of performing their duties. I've also seen police officers who have also contracted um, COVID-19 virus in the course of performing this very important, risky, and hazardous job of ours. So we must continue to pay tribute to them. We must continue to extend due courtesies to these categories of persons, whether they are journalists, whether they are police officers, whether they are, um, they are soldiers, 
whether they are healthcare providers, whether they are telecommunication uh, operators, and the rest of them. And we must continue to work together uh, collectively uh, in order to uh, combat this very dreadful pandemic. And Mr. Frank, but I do understand your stand and your position of the Nigerian police when it comes to enforcing the law on the lockdown. Now, the first two weeks of the lockdown, there were cases of harassment, brutality, and even killings that took place in some states by law enforcement agents who similarly were trying to enforce the directive of Mr. President on the lockdown. Now, I, I want to ask you, I mean, in your capacity as, as a PRO, what constitutes harassment of citizens by, by the, by the uh, security agents? And... At what point do you people step in to make sure that this kind of attitude is checked and does it go on? Because in, in all of the lockdown, there have been cases of human rights abuses and mostly carried out by security agents, including the Nigerian police. Again, we need to understand the very nature of the job that we perform as police officers. And we need to contextualize them so that we don't make allegations that are unfair, uh, uncharitable, and sometimes very demoralizing. These police officers are in the rain and the sun, 247 every day, standing between the citizens and all, and, and all forms of danger. A lot of these police officers we're talking about has paid the ultimate price in the service of this country. A lot of these police officers themselves has also been victims of all forms of human rights abuses and all forms of harassment and intimidation and assault and battery from the citizens that they are protecting. And so we need to understand this and understand the very complicated and sometimes very slippery slope um, that these police officers work every day. And if we understand these, some of these challenges, it will be easier for us to have very meaningful conversation. That is not to say that we've not had cases where some police officers, and very few of them, have stepped out of the bounds of, of, of their professional callings. But in all these situations, we have a very strong, um, a very strong internal institutions and mechanisms for dealing with such infractions. Uh, and I want to tell you that for every major operation we carry, every major assignment of this nature that we are carrying out, we, we design what we call operational orders, standard operating procedures that guide our job, define our rules, and, and set bounds, limits, checks, and balances for police officers who are deployed to perform these roles. And whenever we are, or wherever any police officer is found to have exceeded his bounds, we never hesitate to call such police officer to order. But as I speak to you, there have been a lot of allegations that are, are quite absolutely false. I give you a few examples. Um, in Casina State, for example, the, at the beginning of the enforcement of the lockdown, uh, there was a time police officers from a particular police station picked up a, a, an Islamic cleric who was conducting Jumat service in, in contravention of the rules. And the moment they picked them, a lot of young men, um, aided by hoodlums, invaded the police station, attacked the police station, burned down the police station, burned down operational vehicles of the police, burned down the, the residential quarters of the DPU and the DCO, um, injured about four police officers very badly. And in the course of repelling that attack, police men in that station used legitimate force and proportionate force for that matter to repel these, these hoodlums. And in the course of doing that, of course, there will be casualties on the part of the rampaging hoodlums. And somebody will report that as a case of police brutality. You've, we've seen videos of a police officer who was serially and 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 and, and uh, who was serially slapped multiple times by a woman in, in Oyo State. And that police officer, um, in, 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 in one of the rare display of, of calmness and professionalism, uh, resisted all temptation to actually retaliate or use force on the woman. I never saw 
people celebrate him. I know that I never saw people in the human rights uh, community celebrate celebrate that officer. There was also a police, a female police officer in Abo Delta State that was rough handled, badly assaulted by by some young men because he was part of a team that went to disperse um, a group of people who were holding um, a birthday party in clear contravention of, res of the restriction order. I never saw anybody. The video went viral, yet I never saw anybody speak up in, in, his fav in her favor. The point I'm making here is that we are all citizens. Officers are men of Nigerian police force. Uh, they, 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 they certainly... Um, are all Nigerians. None of us fall down from, f fell down from the Mars. None of us fell down from the moon. We are not, uh, um, we're not deployed from Russia or from, or from Afghanistan. We are all Nigerians. And so when we talk of fundamental rights, we must approach it in an inclusive manner. Um, members of the law enforcement community, whether they are police officers, whether they are immigration officers, whether they are customs or members of the correction services, or whether they are even members of the Nigerian military. We've all got human rights, and we must work together um, in the spirit of mutual respect and advance the collective interests of this country. Uh, Mr. Chris Izuguzo, are you there now, Mr. Chris? Yes, yes. All right. Um, you, you've heard the position and stance of Mr. Frank Mba, I mean, all the while speaking. So I need a quick reaction. Um, I did ask him um, of the reported cases of... Um, human rights violation, harassment, and even um, some deaths were caused in, in, the, in, the, in the face of this lockdown directive given by Mr. President and how the law enforcement agencies have conducted themselves so far. I need your take and your, your possible reaction to a few things he said this evening. Okay, uh, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, we have followed the situation in the country, especially since the first uh, case of uh, COVID-19 was announced. Uh, on the 27th of February, uh, we've uh, followed the activities of the law enforcement agencies, especially uh, the police. I must tell you that at the beginning of this uh, uh, pandemic here in Nigeria, we actually had a very serious uh, 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 battle uh, with uh, the police, where so many people were uh, uh, harassed assaulted, uh, intimidated uh, uh, arbitrarily uh, by the police uh, men on duty. Uh, but uh, since then, we have also tried to engage the police, like uh, the first public relations officer has uh, said clearly here. We've engaged them, and uh, this has uh, appreciably uh, uh, re reduced, I can tell you that. Uh, but we still uh, get pockets of uh, harassment, uh, across the country, uh, like uh, what happened uh, last night, where uh, people really misunderstood uh, the position of the police uh, with regards to uh, enforcement of uh, the curfew. Most of our colleagues were arrested in Lagos. Uh, people were equally arrested in Edo, yes, and, uh, and some other parts of the country. Uh, but uh, when that... Uh, impression was cleared by the uh, DCP Frank, but I think uh, a good number of them were equally uh, released. We will continue to make it clear that we are all supposed to be partners in progress. We are supposed to work together because we are all stakeholders in this uh, polity. A situation where we continue to have this incidents of harassment, clamp down, and what have you, uh, from uh, the security operatives is not a good one uh, for our system, you know, and uh, we'll continue to make this appeal because uh, at a point we even considered uh, 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 calling our colleagues uh, to, to down tools, but we needed to still uh, explore other working uh, relation uh, 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 options. And I believe that uh, it will eventually uh, pay off. All right, um, this will be Frank, but this is to you. Has, has any defaulter of the interstate been arrested or prosecuted? And what, what would you assess as a level of compliance when it comes to the interstate lockdown? The level of compliance 
uh, particularly as, re as it relates to the restriction in the on interstate movement, has been significant, has been substantially positive. But of course, we've had cases where uh, citizens have tried to beat the security measures put in place um, in order to embark on interstate um, um, trips. And of course, we've also had challenges on our own part um, managing the restrictions uh, relating to interstate movement. I give you an example. Uh, most of our police patrols are conducted along mm -hmm. major highways. Most of the security checkpoints are also uh, situated along major highways. But we've discovered over time that a lot of the persons who embark on interstate um, trips um, do so using unconventional routes. They go through regular routes, they go through the bush paths, and sometimes um, they move from one state, get to the border of another state, and then they disembark, and then they cross the border by foot, and then get to the next state, and then board a fresh vehicle, and then again embark on a journey within that state. And you can't stop people moving within the state. And then they get to the border of another state, and then they try to repeat the same trick. But thank God for deployment of both human and um, technological intelligence, uh, we've been able to block some of those um, loopholes. We, we are also beginning to deploy uh, some, some of our police horses to some of those very difficult terrain and some of those bush paths to also help to uh, carry our patrols on those areas. But of course, you will understand that um, enforcement of interstate restriction is a bit more difficult and more challenging than, uh, uh, than enforcing lockdown on your external borders. When a country decides to close its external borders, it is very easy for you to put your security agencies, put out your full soldiers, and seal up your external borders. But when you are trying to seal your internal borders uh, from citizens who are all members of the same country and who sometimes belong to a community that sprawls from one state to the other, you naturally will encounter a lot of, a lot of challenges. Um, there are some states in the country where some community members um, clearly uh, their boundary are so thin, thin in, in 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 the metaphorical sense because they they literally move from one state to the other even to fetch water, and people take advantage of some of those um, artificial boundaries to also uh, beat some of the restrictions. But the good thing is the fact that. We have stepped up our monitoring. We have stepped up our intelligence gathering. And we are also working with communities at those border points to help to actually checkmate um, and, and make sure we put some of those infractions in check. And that's why you are seeing a lot of arrests, whether they are in Kwara, whether they are in Oshogbo, whether they are in Ikiti, whether they are in Enugu, whether they are in Abia, whether they are in Kogi, these arrests are being made by police officers. And the fact that these arrests are being carried out by men and women of the Nigerian police force and other law enforcement agencies um, is a testimony of the fact that we are up to the tax. All right, this will be frank about this. This is my final question to you before I let you go tonight on the show. Now, the president out in his first COVID-19 address to the nation on March 29th, exempted health workers, journalists, as well as staff of telecommunication companies from the lockdown. And he also did the same thing in the second COVID-19 address on April 13, which you've rightly alluded to. Now, I just want to ask you, what do you think in your capacity as a PR of the Nigerian police? What could have given the IGO police, Mohamed Adamu, such powers to want to override the directive by President Mahmoud Buhari? I, I think since the beginning of this program, you have deliberately tried to set up the idea against the Ni Nigerian citizens. Not necessarily. And I, 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 think, I, th I think that's, that's unfair. The Not IG necessarily, Mr. Frank. Understand, the, IG, the IGP understands his job description, and he has done it so meticulously and so passionately and so patriotically. 
and we are in this together and will continue to do the right thing. You have said, the, the, you have just restated the obvious, the fact that persons who are on essential duties are exempted from the restrictions um, touching on um, COVID-19, whether they are curfew or whether they are uh, movement restrictions that are, that are associated with uh, COVID-19. And nothing has changed. That remains the rule. That remains the norm. That is, remains um, uh, the status. Nothing, absolutely nothing has changed. Our responsibility is to continue to move in that direction. Our responsibility is to continue to partner with other relevant agencies to ensure that we're able to deal with this monster called COVID-19 pandemic and then get us, our country um, restarted again. This would be Frank about PRO Nigerian Police. It's been a pleasure having you join us on the show and for your insightful contribution. Thank you for having me. And also the president of Nigerian Union of Journalists, Chris Isuguzo, thank you very much for your brief time with us on the show tonight. We will definitely have you back again, Mr. Chris Unzu. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you for staying with us. In our next discussion, the House of Representatives tackled the federal government on the whereabouts and status of the Chinese doctors. We'll be right back. <laughs>